Hey, we are ready to start putting this drive line back together. If anybody was paying close attention on the end of my assembly video, I did forget one thing. I forgot those two magnets that go right in here. I had no more shut off the camera, was picking up tools and saw the magnets laying on the floor. So I went ahead and just popped this cover back off. You want to clean those magnets up really good and put a little silicone on the bottom when you stick them to the floor of the transmission there. Not a big deal, I just wanted to make sure that nobody else forgot that. So right now we need to put a new O-ring on here and we'll put a little silicone around the flange where it mates up there because that's how it was from the factory. I mean, the O-ring should do the job and a little silicone won't hurt anything. Now, I think you can still get the O-rings from GM I just sized them out and bought a package of them from McMaster Car. Here's the information there, a size 162 O-ring. So if you want to go that way, I'm thinking this whole pack was cheaper than getting one from uh, GM. All right, we'll uh, put a little silicone on there, put the O-ring in, lay this thing flat on the transmission jack, and slide them together. Then it's just... Uh, few bolts and nuts and she'll be together. They've got everything lined up pretty well. I'm gonna work that pinion, or that output shaft into the pinion. And get your bolt holes lined up. Pull it together. And go ahead and get the bolt started. Just trying to slide back apart. Two bolts and three nuts that hold this together. And just keep an eye on the O-ring. Make sure it starts sliding down into the groove. And it is. And everything went together nice. Alright, I'm going to put Loctite on these bolts. And I'll take one of these nuts all the time. I'll probably Loctite that shaft. That third nut... ...goes underneath... Is it, uh, I've got a deformed thread lock nut for it. That's where it came off of it. So I'll put it down on the bottom so it's kind of hard to get locked tight on anyway. So we'll cinch all them down, torque them to 36, and that will be done. Okay, that's all bolted together. And while I was thinking about it, I went ahead and put in my switch there and put in the drain plug down there. Make sure to seal up the threads good with whatever sealant you want. And now we're ready to put on the shifter rod here because that has to go on before the torque tube. This shift arm slides on like this with the jog going away from what would be the torque tube. Make sure the threaded part is down and drive in a new roll pin. Okay, we're ready to put on the torque tube. If you're working like me by yourself, it's a good idea to have a bolt Ready if you need to fasten that up. And I've also got a mallet ready in case I need to tap that on there. Because remember, right, it was a little hard sliding that off the shaft. I shot some anti-corrosion spray on the shaft there and on that shifter rod where it was resting a little bit. <laughs> so hopefully stuff will slide together decently. Ron needs to go through the hole. Assembly up, slide it on the shaft. Okay, it's sliding right on. Make sure the pins are lined up. Put the bolt in there, the bolt in the other side next to the pin. We'll support it with a jack stand out here on the end. Now I'll slowly use these two bolts, pull it on up together. It's not forcing it, everything's sliding together just fine. Okay, it popped together nice and easy. Now I can put the rest of the bolts in and torque them down.
may go around and torque everything to 36 foot pounds. And what I usually like to do with this shifter rod, tape it or fasten it somehow up to the tube like this. Because if you get that laid here or it falls down on the side and you raise everything up in position, that can get pinched and you'll have to lower everything back down to get it out. Now while everything is straight and level, I'm going to go ahead and fill the transmission up with fluid because it's a lot easier to do it now than after it's in the car. And you don't want to forget it. These transmissions are designed to run on Dexron 3. I'll stick her on the side. I'm going to fill it up with a Dexron 3 Valvoline. This is just the regular mineral based stuff. There was some debate on the older transmissions like this one was when they had the paper synchronizers that if you use synthetic fluid, it would jack up the blocking rings. I don't know anything about that. This is the first one of these older ones I've worked on. It's got carbon fiber rings now, so you can use synthetic, you can use uh, the regular mineral base, whatever you want, just use Dexron 3. Uh, I've got Mobile One synthetic in mind. And I've also ran this exact stuff here, and I couldn't tell a bit of difference between the two. They both work perfect. So whichever one you want to use, pump it in through the fill hole until it's level with the bottom of the hole. Put your plug in, and you're done. One more thing you can put on now that won't be in the way and will save you from having to put it on under the car later. It's your two muffler hangers that go on this little bell housing. Just bolt in on each side. It's full of fluid. The exhaust hangers are on. The last thing... And I'm going to wait till this is under the car so I don't bang it around. Just do bolt the slave cylinder on the front here. We'll get a little closer. Put that on last thing before we slip it together. Next up, got to crawl into the car and put the uh, clutch in. Problem is, it's raining. So, I'm going to finish this video and see if the rain's going to quit. 